Hi there, you're about to watch a simulated appointment with a genetic counselor. Genetic counselors are healthcare providers and scientists who help us understand how genetic changes can affect our health. This short video will demonstrate a few key components of a genetic counseling session. Hi Maya, my name is Lynn. I'm a genetic counselor at Avery Good Hospital. How are you today? I'm fine, thank you. How are you? Good, thanks for asking. Before we get started, I wanted to check in and see what your doctor told you about why you were seeing me today and if you had any questions on your mind already. Yeah, well, a while ago they told me something about genetic counseling because some people in my family had sickle cell in their DNA, but they said because I'm not sick, I wouldn't have to go in if I didn't want to. But then my dad got kidney cancer and they said it's important I come now, but I'm not sure how those are related and you can't pass on cancer to your kids, right? I don't know, I'm a little confused. I completely understand why there would be some confusion. It doesn't seem like those two conditions would be related. Genetics can be complicated, but that's what I'm here to help with. In genetic counseling, we'll know important details about both your personal and your family health histories. Then we'll explain what DNA is and how our genetics can affect our health. This will help us understand if there are any conditions that could be inherited. And if there is a chance for an inherited condition, we will discuss our options for finding out more information about those chances, such as genetic testing. Okay, that makes sense. So you'll explain how they're related? Exactly, and if at any time during our conversation, if I say something that doesn't make sense, or you need me to explain more, feel free to ask questions. I wanna make sure we're on the same page. Okay, thank you. I wanna start by taking your family history. I'll ask about the health of your biological family members, meaning family members that were related to by blood and would share DNA with. For example, if you had a step-sibling, you would have different parents than them and not inherit the same DNA. While I'm asking you these questions, I'll be drawing out your family tree. So by the end, we'll be able to see who is affected with the same kinds of health conditions, and then I'll explain how these patterns could be genetic and affect other family members. Then we'll discuss what testing might be available if you wanted to learn more. Conditions we might expect to be genetic are things like physical differences that people have from birth, things that are chronic or long lasting, or conditions that are severe or unusual. You don't have to tell me about illnesses that are caused by infection or injuries. Okay. Starting with yourself, how old are you? 24. And do you have any major health concerns like the types I just mentioned, chronic, severe, differences from birth? Nope. And do you have siblings? Yes, I have a brother. He's 26. Is he a full brother or a half brother? Do you share the same mom and dad? He's my full brother. And how is his health? Pretty good. And do either of you have children? No. Are both of your parents still living? Yes, my dad is 54 and my mom is 52. And how's their health? My dad is pretty sick. He was just diagnosed with a kind of kidney cancer. It was called renal something, uh, a long name. Mm -hmm. I remember that I read in your referral note, it said renal medullary carcinoma. Does that sound familiar? Yep, that's what it was, medullary. I hadn't heard that word before. My mom's pretty healthy though. Well, I'm really sorry to hear your dad is battling cancer. I'm glad to hear your mom is doing okay. How is your family managing emotionally? Thanks. Uh, it's been really hard on the whole family, but we have each other, so that helps a lot. Family support is great. Does your dad have brothers and sisters? Yes. And are they full siblings or any of them half? All full. I have two aunts and one uncle, and they're all in their 50s, I think. And how's their health? One of my aunts has had sickle cell disease and kind of died young, um, and I think the rest of them are doing okay. Do you know how old your aunt was that died and what specifically caused her death? I think she was in her late 20s or early 30s after her symptoms got really bad. She was in a lot of pain and had something with her chest, some kind of chest condition. Acute chest syndrome? Yeah, that sounds right. Well, I'm very sorry for your family's loss. It's okay. My family was actually a bit relieved. I was young then, but my parents said that she was just in so much pain, but it was really hard to get medication from the doctor because they always think people just want drugs. When she died, she at least wasn't in pain anymore. That's just awful. I'm sorry. Some healthcare providers don't have the same knowledge of sickle cell disease and how it can cause significant pain just because they haven't had to treat people with it or experienced it themselves. Sometimes patients need to advocate for themselves in certain situations, 
and we do have more resources and support staff who are knowledgeable and can help. Let me know if you or your family would like more information on how to get that support. It could also help to see a provider who specializes and has more experience in your specific condition. You always have the right to a second opinion. Thank you. I didn't know that was an option. Of course. Does anyone else in your family on your dad's side have sickle cell disease, or do you know if anyone was told they have sickle cell trait? Well, I don't know if my grandparents got tested, but since she had sickle cell disease, I think they were told that they were probably carriers. I doubt my dad or his siblings ever got tested because none of them liked the doctor. Mm -hmm. I know that doctor's appointments and tests can be really stressful. Could you tell me more about your family's experience with the medical system? I think just a lot of bad experiences. Like with my aunt, they treated her like a junkie or something. They didn't believe her and thought she was making it up. We already got judged enough in the regular world. And getting that from a doctor felt even worse because we are supposed to trust them. But it felt like they didn't trust us. I think that made my family weary about going back to the doctor. That's completely understandable to not want to go through that same experience again. I know of some great physicians here in this hospital, so if your family is open to seeing a new medical provider, we can help connect them to someone who could provide them the care that they need. Thank you for that. I'll talk to them about it because they might be more likely to talk to someone they can trust. How are both your grandparents on your dad's side doing? Are they both still living? Yes, and they're pretty healthy besides some of the regular stuff like high blood pressure. Great, so I just have a few more questions to get your mom's side of the family and their health history. Does she have siblings? Yes, one sister who's pretty healthy. And how about your mom's parents? Are they still living? My grandma is, and I think she's doing fine. My grandpa died a couple years ago, but he was pretty old. I don't think anything major happened. Okay, and last question, what's your ethnicity? Or if you know, what parts of the world are your ancestors from? We ask because some conditions occur more often in people with certain ethnic backgrounds and from certain parts of the world. Having this information could help us understand your risk. Uh, my family is African American. We don't know more than that and can't trace it back to a country or anything like that. Sure, I understand. That's still very helpful information. Thank you for answering all of those questions. I know these things aren't always easy to talk about. Next, I want to talk about what genetics is so you have a better understanding of how conditions like sickle cell can be inherited or passed on in a family tree. So tell me, what have you heard about genetics before or seen on TV or the internet? Yes, I think I learned about it in school, but I don't remember a lot, so I probably need a refresher. But it is something that has come up in my family because of sickle cell, and I've seen ads for those DNA tests to find out where your family's from. Okay, good. It sounds like you have some familiarity already. We can start a refresher with some pictures I have here to make it easier to follow along. So what is DNA? What does genetics mean? Our bodies are made up of cells. And inside each cell is our DNA. You can think of DNA as a whole set of instructions for our bodies. Pieces of DNA called genes are like individual sets of instructions. These instructions tell our bodies how to grow and how to function, like determining the color of our eyes or how our heart or lungs develop. We have two copies of each of our genes because each parent passes on half of their genes when they have children. These genes can be passed on in any combination. It's normal to have some variation in our DNA between generations, and most of this variation won't affect our health. But sometimes changes to our genes can cause health complications. Here's a picture of how changes to genes can be inherited and cause a health condition. Since we have two copies of each gene, sometimes when we have a change in only one copy, our health isn't affected because we still have another copy that works and keeps us healthy. But if we have changes to both genes and none are working, we would develop a health condition. We say conditions like this are recessive. Sickle cell disease is a recessive condition because you have to have two gene changes in order to be affected. Having just one change would make you a carrier of sickle cell disease. We call this sickle cell trait. People with sickle cell trait typically won't have any symptoms, except in some very rare cases that I'll talk about later in the session. Since we know there's a chance that you might be a carrier, what do you think it would mean to you if you found out you were a carrier? Hmm, so if I'm a carrier, I wouldn't have the condition, but if my partner is also a carrier, our child could get both the genes with changes and end up being sick? I think that would make me scared and sad. On the other hand, if my partner is not a carrier, our child won't have the disease but might have the trait like me, and I would be very relieved. Exactly, and you're right. This can be very scary to consider. 
When we think about the actual numbers, two carriers having a child together would have a 1 out of 4 or 25% chance of having a child with sickle cell disease. Their children would have a 1 out of 2 or 50% chance of being carriers. And then they would have also a 1 out of 4 chance of inheriting both unchanged genes. Okay, I understand. This is good information for me to know. Based on the information you gave me, there is a chance your dad is a carrier of sickle cell trait, which means you also may be a carrier. Could you tell me what you've been told about what happens when you have sickle cell trait or sickle cell disease? I know it's a blood condition that can cause pain and other symptoms, but I wasn't told any more details. Good, you have some of the basics. Allow me to explain more. Sickle cell disease is a condition that affects the shape of the blood cells so that they can't carry oxygen very well, and it can lead to things like anemia and other health complications. About 1 in 13 African Americans are carriers of sickle cell trait, so it's fairly common. The sickle-shaped cells actually can protect against malaria, a disease people can get from a mosquito bite. Malaria is more common in parts of Africa. That's why people with African ancestry have sickle cell trait more often than other ethnicities. Earlier, I mentioned that some carriers of sickle cell trait might experience some health complications. I'll explain more about that now so you can start to think about if finding out whether or not you're a carrier is something that you would want and think would be helpful. Okay. It is extremely rare, but an associated risk is an increased chance of the specific cancer your dad had, renal medullary carcinoma. Also, situations that involve high exertion, extreme temperature, high altitude, or dehydration can lead to fainting, pain crises, muscle breakdown, and worst case, and very rarely, sudden death. There are also certain drugs that might cause adverse reactions for sickle cell carriers. So with your dad's diagnosis and the family history of sickle cell, there is a possibility he is a carrier, which means you also might be a carrier. How do you feel knowing about some of these risks to your own health? Do you think having more information about your genetic risks would be empowering or cause more anxiety? I'm a little bit worried about having symptoms and getting sick, especially because my dad has that cancer. So I guess those other things are possible for me. If there are ways I could know to prevent or avoid them from happening, that would make me feel a lot better. Mm -hmm. So that leads me to the next topic, which is genetic testing. If you are interested, we can offer you a test that will tell us if you are a carrier or not. Part of the reason some people decide to have this type of testing is to take steps to protect and manage their health, just like you mentioned. Another reason some people may consider testing or not is how this information might affect their other family members, including planning for future family members, aka having children. For some people, thinking about how this information might affect their family members could cause more stress and anxiety, but for others, the possibility that their family members could get information that helps them, it could be reassuring. Have you thought much about how this information might affect your relatives or family planning? I guess since we started talking about how genes are passed down and how we become carriers, I realized my brother could have the same risks as my dad. That does worry me. I don't think he totally understands this, so I think me going through it might make him more comfortable with going through it himself. And I'm not sure if I'll even have my own kids or maybe adopt. But I do think when the time comes, I want to do what I can to make sure they're healthy and have as much information as they can. It sounds like you feel that having this information would be empowering for you. Are you thinking you would want to move forward with testing? Yes, I do. I think it will help my peace of mind and help with talking to my family. Great. I'll start putting in the orders to get testing coordinated for you. Once the lab has results ready, I'll give you a call so we can set up a time to go over them together. I'll also send you home with some information that reviews what we talked about in case you wanted to share it with your family. If there's something that comes up in your discussions and you have more questions, you're welcome to email or call our office at any time. Great. Thank you so much for everything. It was so great to meet you, and I wish the best for your father and the rest of your family. Interested or have more questions about genetic counseling? For more information or to connect with a genetic counselor, you can visit the Minority Genetic Professionals Network at minoritygenetics.org or the National Society of Genetic Counselors at aboutgeneticcounselors.org. Thanks for watching.